Hi, I'm Nilanjan and I warmly welcome you to the channel. In the last video, we learned about the zero conditional and the first conditional. We learned that the zero conditional is used to talk about things that are generally true or things that are facts. On the other hand, the first conditional is used to make realistic predictions about the future, to give warnings to other people and so on. But the thing with both the zero and the first conditional is that they deal with real actions and their real results. However, sometimes we talk about things that are unreal, that are imaginary. In such situations, we cannot use a zero or the first conditional and we use the second, third or the mixed conditionals. And we will learn the second and the third conditionals in this video. The second conditional uses if to describe an unlikely or impossible event or action. And for that reason, the second conditional is called the unreal conditional. The described result in the second conditional is also very unlikely. So what are some characteristics of the second conditional? The action is highly unlikely, imaginary, unreal, or sometimes just straight away impossible. And the result that we talk of is also very unlikely or imaginary. Also, it is in the second conditional that we use the subjunctive mood that you might have heard of. The subjunctive mood is characterized by the usage of were after I, he, she, and the names of people. A second conditional sentence always starts with if. In case of zero and also the first conditional, we could start the sentence with when. But in case of second conditional, we always start the sentence with if. When implies that the event is going to happen and we just don't know at what point in time will it happen. But second conditional deals with hypothetical situations which will, which will never happen. So we don't use when in case of second conditional. So let's understand the structure of the second conditional with the help of an example. If I knew his number, I would call him. A second conditional sentence always starts with if. After the if, we put the subject, I, he, she, it, whatever the case may be. Then we talk about the action using the simple past tense. So in this case, it is if I knew, knew what? His number. So if I knew his number, that entire thing is the if clause. After the if clause, we put a comma and then we have the main clause in which case we talk about the result. If I had his number, what would I do? I would call him, which is the result. We always use would, could or might in second conditional sentences. Most of the times it is would. Sometimes we also use might. Sometimes we use could. Those two things show a different degree of possibility or certainty. And after would, could or might, we use the base form of a verb to show the result. So in this case, it is I would call him. You can also change the order of the sentence by writing the main clause first and then the if clause. But in that case, don't put a comma in the sentence. So a second conditional sentence should look like this. If this thing happened, that thing would happen. If we are talking about an ongoing action, the structure of the second condition should be if this thing happened, that thing would be happening. So why do we use a second conditional? We use the second conditional to imagine or to wish for a different present or a different future. So back to the example that I just gave. If I knew his number, I would call him or I would call him if I knew his number. The thing is, I don't know his number. If I did know his number, then I would have called him. But since I don't know his number, I can't call him. So, you know, it's a hypothetical. It's an unreal situation. If children spent less time on their phones and more time exercising, they would be healthier. Do they do that? Do they spend more time exercising? No, probably not. But if they did spend more time exercising, they would be healthier. We also use the second conditional to seek advice or to give advice. Seek advice means to ask for advice from others. If you were me, what would you do? You are not me. We are different individuals. 
But if you were in my shoes, if you were me, what would you do in such a situation? And when we want to give advice, we say, if I were you, I would quit your job. That is, if I were in your shoes, if I were you, I would quit the job that you are currently doing because maybe the pay is less, maybe the working conditions are not nice or whatever the case may be. But since we are different individuals and I'm not you, it's an impossible situation. We also use the second conditional to make requests. If I closed the window, would it bother you? I have not closed the window, but suppose if I closed the window, would it trouble you? Would it cause you inconvenience? If you could finish this report by Tuesday, it would be great. Now sometimes we are unable to do something and just saying no is a little rude. But instead of saying no and sounding rude, we can use the second conditional to soften our replies. For example, a friend of you who is taking mixed martial arts lessons asks you to join him. So you can say, if I had more time, I could take up MMA, which means that if I had more than 24 hours, I would take up MMA. So indirectly, you are rejecting your friend's request, offer, whatever the case may be. If there were more hours in a day, I would gladly help with this project. Sometimes we want to ask hypothetical questions and also answer hypothetical questions. In such cases also, we use the second conditional. For example, if you won the lottery, what would you do? If you won the lottery tomorrow, how would you spend that money? What would you do? It's a hypothetical question because I don't know if you are going to win a lottery tomorrow or not. By the way, if you won a lottery tomorrow, what would you do? Let your imagination run wild and tell me what would you do? Let me know in the comments below. To answer a hypothetical question like this, you can say, if I won the lottery, I would buy a new car. And sometimes we also use a second conditional to ask rather silly questions. For example, if you could have a superpower, what superpower would you have? Or if you were an animal, what would you be? As you must have noticed, we use the verb were with many of the subjects in these sentences where they normally would not go. As I mentioned earlier, this is the case of subjunctive mood, which is a characteristic of the second conditional. All right, with that, we wrap up the second conditional. Now let's move on to the third conditional. The third conditional is called the past unreal conditional. Let's look at an example to understand the third conditional. If I had left earlier, I would have caught the train. Did I leave for the station late? Yes, I did. Did I reach the station late? Yes, I did. Did I miss the train because of that? Yes, I missed the train because of that. I'm thinking about what would have happened if I had left earlier. But that is something that I cannot change now. I'm imagining something that would have happened had I reached the station earlier if my actions were different. The third conditional is used to talk about events that cannot be changed. If you had done things differently in the past or if somebody else had done things differently in the past, that would have had a different result now. And that is what third conditional is all about. Now let's learn about the structure of a third conditional sentence. If I had left earlier, I would have caught the train. We always start third conditional sentences with if. And just like second conditional, we cannot use when instead of if in third conditional sentences. Because when implies that the action will happen at some point, which is not the case in case of third conditional. Then we have the subject, which is I. After the subject, we use the past perfect tense, which is had and then the past participle form of the verb. In this case, if I had left, had left, left is the past participle form of leave. If I had left earlier and that concludes the if clause, then we put a comma and then we have the main clause, which shows the result. What would have happened if I had left earlier? I would have caught the train. So we write the subject I would have, or sometimes we can also say could have or might have, 
but mostly it is would have. Then we write the past participle form of the verb, which shows the result, what would have happened. So a third conditional sentence should have this structure. If this thing had happened, that thing would have happened. If we are talking about an ongoing action, then the sentence should look like this. If this thing had happened, that thing would have been happening. While writing, we use full words. He would have. Whereas while speaking, we use contractions. He would have. Also, just like any other conditional, the order is not fixed. So you can write the main clause first and then the if clause. But if you are doing that, don't put a comma in the sentence. All right. So now that we have understood how to form third conditional sentences, where do we use them? We use the third conditional to express regret. If I had known it was your birthday, I would have brought you a present. But did I know it was your birthday? No, I did not. So I didn't bring you a present. But I would have definitely brought you a present had I known it was your birthday. If I had known you were visiting, I would have got something to eat. We wouldn't have missed the plane if we had taken a taxi. Sometimes while expressing regret, you can also add the word only in the sentence. We wouldn't have missed the plane only if we had taken a taxi. Just like we use the third conditional to express regret for not doing something ourselves, we criticize others for doing something or for not doing something. You wouldn't have an attendance shortage if you had missed fewer classes. If he had actually studied something, he would have passed the exam. If Rahul had left the house at 8, he would have been on time for the interview. We also use the third conditional to express gratitude, to show that we are grateful for something. I would have never learned foreign languages if I had never gone to an international school. If you hadn't helped, I would have accomplished nothing. We also use the third conditional to ask hypothetical questions. What would you have done differently if you hadn't landed your dream job? If you had known that there would be no tomorrow, what would you have done differently? Now, I mentioned that sometimes we don't use would in the main clause. Instead, we use could or might. Let's look at a couple of examples. If I had known you would be at the party, I might have gone. I could have been a world-class footballer if I had practiced more when I was younger. Now I mentioned that a third conditional sentence should start with if subject had and then the past participle form of the verb. However, we can change the sentence a little bit to make it sound more formal by first using the word had followed by the subject and then following the rest of the sentence structure that I mentioned earlier. And in this case, we do not use the word if we completely drop it. For example, if I had known you were visiting, I would have got something to eat. Had I known you were visiting, I would have got something to eat. Similarly, if you had missed fewer classes, you wouldn't have an attendance shortage. Had you missed fewer classes, you wouldn't have an attendance shortage. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Now that you have learned second and third conditionals, the next thing that you should do is learn next conditionals. Alternatively, if you are not sure about zero or first conditional, you can also learn about them by clicking in the link in the description. I will leave a link to a playlist where you will find all these videos one after the other. That's it for today. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. If you know somebody who can benefit from this video, make sure to share it with them. If you have got questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe and keep learning. Bye.